So, good afternoon. Um, it, this is a short talk. It's, uh, I hope to be able to do uh, a real demonstration about how to set up uh, a new add-on, uh, at least relatively new add-on for Plone to integrate uh, with LDAP. So about you, who should you, uh, who's this talk? Um, integrators, uh, developers, uh, with the main question, how do I connect Plone uh, to an LDAP user directory? And maybe you might be interesting, uh, interested to know what's new in PASP plugins LDAP compared to the old uh, Plone up LDAP or uh, products uh, LDAP stack that uh, we've been using in the community for a very long time. I'm Fred van Dijk, I'm working for Zest Software. Uh, we're based in Rotterdam. I've been using uh, Plone for a very long time as a user, then I moved a bit to an integrator, uh, developer, consultant, trainer, and doing a lot with it. So, what are we going to do? Short introduction for those who don't know it, what's LDAP? Why do people use LDAP? How do we have users and groups in Plone? How do we integrate LDAP in Plone? And then we'll quickly go on to s s watching the plugin, installing it, setting it up, sharing uh, top some users and groups, advanced setup, and hopefully I'll get in time to the wrap up and have time for questions. So why do we use LDAP? Um, LDAP is uh, a centralized database of, uh, of users and groups. And if you know, uh, when we started with computers, we had to copy uh, uh, user and group files from one computer to another, or an, a system administrator had to move from his Windows 3 PC to another Windows 3 PC and set up users. And that really sucked. The Unix guys got there a bit earlier, uh, of course, so they uh, got into uh, an NES system, Network Information Systems, uh, X500. And when we started with the PC revolution around the 1990s, we had, uh, for Windows, we had LAN Manager and something I really love because I used that in secondary school, novel Netware. That's, all that stuff had one user list and had one, um, one group list. And what happened that we wanted to mimic all the organizational structures a bit more. So we made hierarchical user databases where you'd have an organizational structure. Unix was there first again with uh, Slap Day. Um, then some old favorite, that's the first time I realized it, that something was going on. Netscape with the browser also started to build server products and made Netscape Directory Server. And of course Windows followed with Novel, Novel Directory Services which Windows copied and became Active Directory. And out of all of that stuff came, in the end, LDAP. What is LDAP? LDAP is actually just a protocol to, to query uh, a database with users and groups inside. And there can be many uh, LDAP backends. So you can query Active Directory, you can query a, a, a Unix uh, uh, server which has some uh, user or, or group structure in there. But LDAP is the protocol. Um, that, that makes a kind of uh, yeah, platform independent uh, uh, connector to all of them. So when we go to Plone, Plone has its own uh, user database. You can just store users and groups in it. But like we said, with, with larger organizations, you might want to connect to a central directory. The central directory is mostly used for authentication. So you have authentication and you have authorization. Authentication is who are you? Normally, with a, you have to verify a user with a password, and then the system knows who you are. Then we can also store as a part of authentication in which groups do you belong. And then when you go to the, the service, for example, the Plone group, we will say, for this, on this folder, this group has this permissions. And the permissions part is the authorization part. So mostly with setups, authentication is uh, done in the directory, and the authorization is mostly done uh, on, on the services themselves. What's this problem in the Plone community? If you have a client or you have an organization and you want to set up LDAP, you only do it occasionally. There are a number of moving parts. You set this up once, you fiddle a while until it works, you don't look back, and then maybe next year you have another client, or you have maybe two or three clients, you forgot exactly what was what, and you have to start all over again. I looked up on community.plone.org. Uh, we have a new system now for two and two and a half years, and there are at least 50 threads 
on LDAP, on community.plonboard.org, with questions. What we already had is rather old. This is the authentication in ZOAP. Um, we started with an SEL users folder. We started with a products LDAP user folder around 2001. Then we extended that with a pluggable authentication service in ZOAP, which was there, version 2 was 2007. And that's not even Plone. This is just what we built for ZOAP in the last 15 years. On top of that, in Plone, then we have some uh, known ones if you try to set up some LDAP, which is Plone up LDAP and products Plone LDAP, which is only wrapping all the stuff that is in ZOAP. So that's a lot of history and a lot of stack and a lot of add-on products you have to learn. So one of the uh, Plone providers here in Europe, Blue Dynamics, uh, created a new plugin called Pass Plugins LDAP um, with a new underlying system where all the other stuff I showed on the last pages is not really there. Um, they base it on another system, it's called Node, it's a kind of virtual tree of objects and that's how they uh, copy and, and be able to very quickly not only query an LDAP uh, server but also uh, do some caching. And it's a lot easier, especially if you not only have Plone, but you also have other products like uh, Pyramid, which we here have on the conference. Uh, Pass plugins LDAP builds on Node LDAP, which is a Python package you can also use in Pyramid or you might use in other custom projects. And it all under the hood works the same. So what do we get when we have a new add-on in, in Plone? We start using it, we improve it. Um, there was a fundraising uh, last year to improve for Pass plugins LDAP to add some pagination, which is a support to query large amounts of uh, users and groups in, uh, in an LDAP system. If you have a larger organization, like a university or a medium-sized company, you can get from 5,000 to 50,000 objects. And if you query an LDAP server and say, look, I'm searching for all users, and you get back 50,000 obje 50, objects, things will get very slow, you, or you won't get an answer at at all. So that was added last year. Um, some other people made some more uh, improvements. Uh, Asuka Suka made improvements uh, for his university and we also made some improvements and especially what we did was improve onto Asuka's uh, fixes for user searching because that was something that's not in there. I'll show you if you go to the sharing tab and you type part of a username then nothing would show up and that's one of the things we fixed and that's what I'd like to show you. So, we added some fixes. Uh, we did it for ourselves in Plone 4, but it also works in, uh, in Plone 5. Still some work to be done. Um, this nice GitHub uh, thingy uh, allows you to fork, pay, uh, fork packages and then fork them again and then do some more fixes on another fork. And we kind of have to wrap this back up into the original Pass Plugins LDAP uh, uh, thing, but that's, uh, it's a bit tricky. So, to demonstrate stuff, the cool part. Did I manage this? In? Yes, I managed this in about 10 minutes. Demonstration. I've got a small LDAP server set up on my laptop here. Um, I'm going to quickly show you. Uh, if anybody wants to do this uh, also uh, on a Unix or a, or a Mac system, I can, can give them my configuration later, so you can test and play with this uh, yourself, because that's really the, the intention of this talk. Don't, don't do a lot of guessing. You really have to experiment a bit with LDAP to get to know it. So, I've got in my terminal over here, uh, not showing, let's set it up better. Images, wrong schicking, synchronous. Yeah, that's better. So I've got a small LDAP server running here, which is called a slap day with a configuration and it serves it on localhost 8389. So that's there running. Um, configuration is not that difficult. Uh, let's get this one over here. Actually, it's a one large configuration file for the LDAP directory server, and this is the most important part, where you say we are serving uh, ldapdemo.com, which is the 
the kind of the, the structure, and this is the root user. And the root user, you need that to load the directory, in this case, with a lot of users and, uh, and groups. So you can do that with uh, LDAP, uh, LDAP add. Then you have to test if everything is working. So what you can do is use on the command line, for example, LDAP search, and this gem here will query uh, my LDAP for bum, 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 almost everything that is an inet.org person in the main directory. And as you see, it returns some stuff. Do this first. Don't start messing around in Plone or Zoop. First test that your LDAP server is running. So then you might want to have something more convenient to browse. And what you can use is uh, Apache Directory Studio. It's an open source uh, project from Apache. It's a big Java tool. It has an LDAP browser. It even have, uh, has a built-in LDAP server. And here we are. I've got a connection here for which you can set some properties. Well, the properties is just query to localhost. And now I can browse through my <coughs> LDAPdemo.com is the main organizational unit. Then I have a subfolder with groups. And I have a subgroup with users. Added a few bogus and real users. So this is me. I hope it's, it's a bit legible. Um, and here, so you have a user with a number of attributes. It, it almost looks a bit like SOAP or Plone. It's just an object tree with uh, folders and with objects in them. And those objects have a number of fields. But in LDAP, it's optimized to only be user objects or group objects or uh, your organizational structure. So use this. You can add, uh, add fields. You can edit fields. It's, it's, I can't go into, it, it's, uh, go into it with much detail, but use this to, to check your directory a local demo, but also if you're in your organization or you go to a, a, a co another company as a consultant, use this to, to figure out what's going on. Then we have to configure Plone. Um, I'll share my sheets later, so I'll, I'll uh, not go over this uh, a lot. Only important thing, always pin your packages, right, in your build out. Don't just include pass plugins LDAP and hope for the best. So let's go to our plan side. Go to the site setup. In the site setup uh, with the add ons, you will see that there's LDAP directory support. I've already activated it for now. It will also activate the extra support library. And if you go up, then you will now have here in the configuration LDAP AD support. So the most important thing is, of course, finding your server on the server top. Already said it's running on 8389. And this is the main user with which Plone first logs into LDAP to be able to make all the other queries. Um, for now, I've used the, the same root user I've set in the LDAP configuration file. Don't do this in production. In production, make sure you use a read-only user that if for some reason uh, your, your Plone server gets breached and somebody finds this password, they can only connect to the LDAP as a normal user and only have read-only writes. Then we go down, and now we have on the second part, we are going to say where all the users are in LDAP. And this is the organizational unit users, LDAPdemo.com. And in this part, we only want to find all the inet.org persons. And this exactly matches what we find here. Here is our LDAP, and we are looking for all users under this tree to figure out the users. And we want an inet.org person back. And now comes the tricky part where I spend a lot of time, and I think most of you spend a lot of time, and that's the user attribute aliases. So you will have to map with LDAP the fields which are on all the user objects here, onto a few required ones. Plone for every user wants an ID and a login. And the real distinguished name is, I think, for pass plugins LDAP self. And you have to map them to a unique item there. I've now used UID, which is the main identifier in my own directory, which is the UID field over here, which is like Fred Fede, for example, here. But if you go to uh, a company which has Active Directory, then in the Active Directory, the user object might 
uh, standard have uh, some account name as the identifying, uh, uh, as the unique identifying uh, uh, object. And below there, you have a number of extra fields which will get copied from LDAP into Plone attributes. For example, the mail object, uh, uh, the full name, uh, the location, which is always, uh, which is also in in, uh, in a normal uh, user uh, uh, profile object in Plone. And in the end, you can uh, set up caching, which is very important if you want to go to production, because otherwise all the queries you will do to the uh, LDAP server all the time will get repeated for the same uh, requests, and then you can really bog down the LDAP server, and maybe people will set complaining, or you will get performance problems. I'll jump quickly over the group uh, settings here, because actually the groups are similar as the, as the user settings. You have to provide, again, where the, uh, where the groups are in the directory, search for them, say what you want to get back, group, group of names, is also exactly here. The object class is also here, group of names in the directory, so that's the same, the same thing again. Some required attributes and some extra sheets. So you've seen uh, the actual objects. I've shown them in, in Apache Studio. Let's try this out. So I'm going to the news folder, and I'm going to the sharing tab, and I'm going to search for Fred VD. Well, this already worked. This is, so here I have Fred van Dijk suddenly popping up with its full name, and the full name is coming up because I matched the full name in the extended worksheet attributes. But I can also search for Rotterdam. And this is now popping up because I have a location field, and this is the extension that ASCO and also we at Cess made for possible against LDAP. It's now searching in the location as well, and it's finding all users with the location set to Rotterdam. So now I can uh, add those users. I won't go into that because that's, that's default plan sharing stuff. But I can also search for something that's called commu, and there's a communications group. <laughs> So this is the thing we, we had to, it's, it's kind of a strike thing, you have to uh, use an asterisk if you want to search for partial uh, things. So I can do this, then we'll show marketing. I can also do star EST, and then it will come up with me and Maurits again because I filled out our email addresses with software.nl. So the searching is really, really, really flexible and very convenient if you have a large user directory, and that's something we, we really needed for some customers. I've now demoed you the local sharing tab. It should also work on the global sharing tab, um, but I found out this morning there's a bug in there. So if you go to site setup and you say in the uh, users and groups here, you can also, of course, do global. It should work the same, but for some there's a bug in Plan 508 with this. Um, so I'm not going to do this because then the whole server uh, stops searching for any users. Another last thing is I've now set uh, my organization units here. If you can see, there's a sneaky subgroup over here with another user. You might know him. And Paul, at the moment, is not found at all. So if I go to the news here and I go into the sharing tab, uh, sharing tab, and I search for Paul Air, He's not showing up. This is something, it's not showing up because in the site setup, in the settings for Active Directory, I've set up the user searching to be only good for one level. So it'll only find the objects that are directly below the users ldapdemo.com. If I switch this to subtree, then it will do a kind of recursive search. And if I do this, then when we go to news, and go to the sharing tab. We should be able to search for Paul something. And it doesn't show up, of course. Demo effect. No, then we have to do with some caching, probably. Uh, just restarting my instance for now. Oh, 
I'll show it later. I first finish up the talk. We don't have that much time anymore. So I showed this very simple one. This is what happens when you look into a real Active Directory uh, LDAP uh, uh, server. Then you'll see a lot, 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 lot more objects because Active Directory has a lot of more support. And if you look into that, you will also, for example, see some account name here or other fields uh, which are in there. We already talked a bit about performance. If you really want to have a very large, uh, uh, very large uh, directory, then uh, use MMCached. I talked with uh, the developer of, uh, of Pass Plugins LDAP this morning, Jens, uh, and he said, always use MemCache. Never leave home without it. Always activate MemCache, because otherwise performance will be horrible. <laughs> Very easy to set up. Most Unix systems already have it. Um, this is a small snippet you could use if you're using build out and you want to set up a local memcached server. Um, I've now skipped over the, the configuration. This is, uh, of course, quite a bit to set up um, in the site setup if you have to go to the Active Directory panel and set all these settings. What you can do is make a policy package, and I'd quickly like to demonstrate that. Manage, I'll create a new plone site. Let's see if Paul is available right now. Sharing. Yes, and there he shows up now. So that's the one level or subtree uh, recursive searching. So back to my new site. Go to the <coughs> site setup. Go to the add-ons. And I've created an LDAP demo policy product. And when I install it, you will notice nothing installed here. Now LDAP is set in cell, installed and my policy add-on is also installed. When I go now to the configuration uh, for Active Directory and LDAP support. All my settings are there. All mappings are there. I can also configure the memcached server if I want to. And if I go to news and try the sharing in the second clone site, then let's hope this works. Demo effect. Yeah, and there's my Fred van Dijk as well. So, one last thing, I, of course I can log into a site, so I can go to and use my very secret, secret password. And if you go into preferences and look at the personal information there, you will see that it also copied this stuff from the LDAP directory, it copied my full name, and it copied my location as well. And if you extend your object, user objects, you can grab more information from. Uh... So that's what you can do with, uh, with some generic setup settings for, for much easier deployment. Final thoughts, as you can see, this is running through it in, in 15, 20 minutes. It's not uh, plug and play easy stuff. And that's also where I think the questions from community.plum.org come from. Hey, I installed this product, I filled in some fields, I guessed some attributes, and it doesn't work. No, it doesn't. You should know, really know your directory. Use Apache uh, Directory Studio, look into the LDAP, see what's there. For production, use SSL communication. Nowadays, you never know what's happening in the server farm uh, or in, your, uh, in the company system when your plan server is uh, uh, talking to the LDAP uh, server. As I said, make a read-only admin user. Um, and what we figured out, uh, the add-on still needs some polishment, it still needs some refinement, um, but it's a very, very mature and stable product already. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Fred. A big applause for him.